get lost in the back streets. Maybe a Tread the Globe logo on our arms? What do you reckon? <laughs> hey, Jaden. They put this cheese at caves for oh. seven years. Seven years? I always find caves a little bit creepy. It's a type of sausage, sausage. They put it in the breakfast dishes. I think you can still drive up here. This is the real Marmorous Old Town here. <laughs> <laughs> We're Marion and Chris, and we've been traveling full time since May 2018. It is the best atmosphere ever. Whilst attempting to drive around the world in Trudy, our home on wheels, this happened. All British travellers abroad are advised, advised uh, to return now. As borders closed around us, we decided to wait it out in Turkey until we were able to continue our adventure east. If you're new to our channel and you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and joining our travel community. We jumped back into Trudy and we are heading to Marmaris, um, which is another one of those destinations that we have to visit whilst we're here in Turkey, heading down the coast. and we found a lovely little spot right next to the marina although there is a fun fair thing so hopefully tonight it won't be noisy I'm thinking with Covid times it won't um, but yeah the drive down from Akiaka was lovely and this is the car park and Trudy's parked up in the corner and then the marina is behind that building there I clocked that it was 45 TL for the night. There aren't any services, but we don't need anything. We've got everything we need. We've woken up here in Marmaris and uh, we found this spot by the marina. It was really, really quiet. And, uh, Very quiet, even though there's a fun <coughs> fair ride right next. I suppose Covid days is closed. It's closed. The yes. fun fair's just there. And the cell towers. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. There's cell towers right on top of the hill there which means we had a good internet reception yesterday um, so this morning we're going to have a walk around old town uh, Marmaris is literally walking distance from here so we thought we'd go and have a look around and then we've heard there's a cave in the national park just south of where we are so we thought we'd go for a little walk and see if we can find the cave we've just uh, come from the car park into the marina area and there's this little shopping center with Starbucks and we've just found a Christmas tree with Father Christmas because we are only a few days from Christmas. Ah, and good morning, Hello. Kitty. How are you? There you go. Oh, they're all coming. The cats come a running to Marianne and me again. Look. <laughs> good morning. We've literally just wandered uh, for a minute and we've come to the seafront here, the harbour. Look at that view. It's a lovely little island here, bridge over. This is the old town area of uh, Marmaris. And uh, as you know, we always like to walk around the old town areas because that is the true heart of any city and tends to be more traditional, which is what we like. just come over the bridge take a look at all these beautiful wow. boats behind me I think there's quite a lot of money invested in these and of course if you get peckish whilst you're on your boat yacht ship there is a massive selection sushi. of eateries a sushi, bar. sushi <laughs> kebab grill pancakes they've got it all literally anything for everyone
I'm loving the octopus statue. How amazing is that? It's a really lovely statue and it's got lights here so obviously at night it's all lit up. Looks good doesn't it? Looking at all these restaurants and bars down on the marina here. You just know that in the summer this place would be heaving. Um, I'm sure for any of you that have been uh, to Marmaris on holiday I don't think you've probably seen it this quiet. There's literally only a few people down here. We're just going to walk around um, and just get lost in the back streets here for a couple of hours. As Chris said, it would be absolutely humming in the summer and we feel really lucky to be here when it's so quiet. And being able to enjoy how lovely it is. The stonework here is fantastic and it's just lovely to walk around these little tiny cobbled streets without the masses of crowds. This I suppose is what Marmaris would have been like before it was found uh, because it's a massive, loads of people have messaged me saying you're going to buy a house in Marmaris, all the Brits live in Marmaris, everybody comes to Marmaris and wants to stay. Um, we live in a van and we keep rolling so that will never happen. There are lovely little boho, quaint little shops dotted around. But something we're coming across a lot is tattoo parlours. I think Bodrum is the tattoo centre of Turkey. I've never seen a collective of tattoo shops like here. I think it's probably a case of, you know, when the young lads come on holiday, oh, okay. they have beer and then after beer, they all dare each other to have, you know, tattoos. And uh, maybe, maybe that's the case, but there's a lot of tattoo shops here in Old Town, uh, Marmaris. I'm too scared. I don't want pain. Maybe a Tread the Globe logo on our arms. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> Oh, you can have henna. Oh, henna, henna, henna sounds a better idea. We found a little um, food style market selling loads of fresh cheeses and things. Yeah, we're gonna come so we're going to go and have a little look because you know what we're like with food. Good night, Dan. <laughs> Look at all these cheeses! Is there something local to this area? No. Not a cheese making area? No, no. no. This is from all this cheese from Black Sea. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and what about this cheese? No, this is um, butter. Oh, it's butter? Oh, this is butter. Wow, oh, that's, that's a big pack huh. of butter oh. there. Look at that. Wow. That's a whole lot of butter. <laughs> yeah. This is called Cherkes mm -hmm. and it's uh, very famous at Black Sea. Sarı. Teşekkür ederim. It's smoked, değil mi? Yaban sarımsak. Sarımsak diyorsan. Oh, it's smoked. Çok güzel. Mmm. It's called Cherkes. Yeni yıllık mağarada yapılır, keçi sütüyle yapılır. It's it's like um, they put this cheese at caves for oh. seven years. Wow. And then it shapes like this. Seven years. Yes. yes. Wow. That's really nice. It's intense, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying some olives. Mm. It's not just for breakfast, you know, you can use these olives. In salads. And, and, yeah, in salads and mm. everything. We got sujuk. It's a type of sausage, sujuk. They put it in the breakfast dishes. Mm. Ivalik toast has sujuk in it. Mm -hmm. It must be good because he's eating his own. <laughs> he's eating his own sausage. Oh. It's natural, 100% uh, cow meat. I think we should get some of that too. We have to get one. Beer. <coughs> How long does it last for? Ne kadar? Okay, like it's, it's last uh, six months. Yeah. Grill it, you can put it in omelettes, you can put it omelets, with the eggs for breakfast, you can, you can with toast, with pickles and melted cheese like Ivalik toast. Ivalik oh. toast? 
Yes. I love <laughs> Overlick Town. <laughs> One of my favourite cocktails is Itchley. I'm probably saying it wrong, but they sell them freshly made here. So I think we're going to have to get some of those as well. It's an expensive day today, but it's the best place because we've got all the local producers, all the local suppliers, all the freshly made produce. You cannot beat it and we love it. And thank you to my new friend who is actually helping me with all the translation. <laughs> Woo Look at all these spices. One thing you get in Turkey is a lot of fresh spices. Is that not just beautiful? Tomato paste, I think, maybe, or pepper paste. Oh, it's pepper, pepper paste. Uh, nice. A little chocolate. It's like pistachio sugar. on top. Oh, okay, sugar. Pistachio sugar. Teşekkür ederim. Mmm. Enjoy your meal. Enjoy your meal. Thank you very much. Bon appetit. Afiyet olsun. Bon appetit. That's delicious. It's a cross between fudge and a flapjack all mixed together. Do you think so? It's like sweet, sticky, Mexico look inside. It tastes like Mexico cherry. Has it got cherry inside? No, no. <laughs> I got that wrong. <laughs> mm. You know, you make at Christmas those cherry truffly. Oh, what I mean, cherry. Yeah. You know, like the little balls you get. Yeah. And it tastes like that. Oh, it's delicious. Like that. So we just managed to get these guys to do the welcome to Turkey for the next intro. Welcome to Turkey! <laughs> now they're just hooking up on Instagram. Thank you so much for coming to Turkey, he said. Oh, we love Turkey. Thank you for looking after us during lockdown. Hey, <laughs> Jaden! Do you know, you meet some people when you travel, but Jan, what a fabulous young man. Um, inspirational. And it's made me really think about it. There's such a contradiction here in Marmaris with the old, the new, the modern, the touristic and the authentic. And there is really something here for everyone. Um, you can find nice little places if you want the quieter things. But it's really nice here, isn't it? It's yeah. a really special place. I just love, you know, the fact you just walk into a market and the next minute you're just going around laughing and joking with everybody. It's just yeah. such a friendly place, Turkey. Yeah, and it's I... a, it is a testament to the personalities, the people of Turkey. Mm. Oh, look, they got this uh, funky covered walkway here. With all the modern, they got lots of shoe shops and design shops and sports shops, clothing shops. So we've wandered down through the uh, back streets of Old Town here in Marmaris and we've come out on the other side with this lovely coastline that you can see behind me. Um, it's funny walking around Marmaris, as we said, it's a massive holiday destination and it has that sort of Western feeling with bars and tattoo parlors. Um, you don't, we don't really feel exactly what it would be like in the summer because I can imagine if it was full of tourists we would have a totally different feeling and experience walking around. But places like uh, Marmaris um, or Bodrum, you know, they're great if you want to come to Turkey and experience Turkey without fully um, immersing yourself in the Turkish culture. Um, you know, places on the Black Sea and really up away from the tourist spots, obviously you get much more of a traditional, real feel of Turkey. Um, but we've had a really lovely time, you know, coming down this tourist region um, of Turkey. Um, and for us, it's probably because it's so quiet, because <laughs> we like the, uh, the traditional um, experience, but it's been a lovely little walk yeah. round. And we say all the time, vans and cities don't really mix. And uh, Marmaris has been not at all what we expected, but that's because all the restaurants and bars are closed. It's closed, yes. Yeah. So, you... no so walking along the seafront here, they've got lots of boats that will take you out on daily tours. There's lots of dive boats. Obviously, diving's a big thing here. Dive centre here, based on on this boat. And there you go. That's slightly unusual. This one's got a glass 
bottomed boat. So there you go, if you want to go for a tour and see what is underneath you whilst you're doing your tour, they've even got that here. So if you're looking for the tourist information office, just near the harbour uh, in front of the castle, you can see there's a tourist information office behind me that will give you all the information you need about your stay here in Marmaris. If you like the line, the witch in the wardrobe, something I learned, and I only learned this coming to Turkey, was Aslan, the lion, is actually Turkish for lion. So they've got a statue of Aslan here, and that's what yeah, reminded okay. me. I feel really spoiled actually because we've got to see so much of Turkey but we're even getting to see Turkey like the busy busy touristy places and we've got them to ourselves and although it's incredibly tragic for everybody whose business is struggling and suffering I feel like we're able to bring you some beautiful places in Turkey without the crowds. Ah, look, there's the entrance to the castle. Look at the size of these guns. Wow. The, uh, the little narrow streets dotted around here uh, by the entrance of the castle are wonderful. This is the real marmorous old town here. Let's go, should we go and have a look in? Let's go and have a look in. So entry into the castle is 18 TL, which at the moment is about £1.80. As we said before, if you have a museum card, if you're going to see lots of sights on your time here, it's worth getting a museum card. Uh, it just saves you on some of the entrance fees. So how cool is that? They've actually got a flower display here made up of what looks like cauliflower or different coloured cabbages. <laughs> That's a bit unusual. Something I've noticed as we come down this um, coastline is the roses. There are so many roses. And on the edge of the garden, they've got these lovely little pink roses that look like they're about to blossom. So although it's been a little bit cooler here, it's not cold. just walk to the top of the steps and you can see where the cannons would have looked out and look at this how gorgeous is that view another thing that surprised me is all these like mountain ranges it's just gorgeous if you want a good aerial view over Marmaris then coming up to the top of the castle here it's a nice view, you can see the city stretched out behind me. What I love is that there isn't actually any barriers on uh, any of these drops around the castle. They've just got a sign that says, do not climb. We, we know back home it would all be fenced off and they wouldn't let you go anywhere near it. But over here, you know, common sense still prevails. And I like the fact that there is no barriers and if you do climb up and fall off, it's your own fault. Yeah. The same as here, look, no barriers. Obviously, if you have young children, I would keep them close to you. But look at this view all the way over the city here. We've walked down sort of through the, the, the back streets here and come, come out, walk down this side. Trudy's parked behind uh, this mound here on the other side. little signs in the car park and I've used my Google Translate and it says be careful of the kittens or warning of the kittens please check your engine before you start your car oh that's lovely that's so sweet I have heard horror stories about kittens and cats in the winter because they go into the engine blocks to stay warm so they've actually put signs up that's so sweet 
Actually, we have had cats in our engine in some places we park, and you in can the hear car them. Park. You can hear them running yeah. out when we start the engine. So we jump back into Trudy, and we're going to go and see if we can find this nearby cave and somewhere to park up because it's a lockdown weekend, and uh, so we need somewhere safe, secure, and quiet to park up. Did you go to them? We're going in the direction of the cave, but we're just trying to, because it's 1, 1.30 now, we're just trying to clock somewhere that we can sleep tonight because it is a lockdown weekend. Got lovely views. Look at this road running right parallel to the sea. Uh, we've come just, just slightly south of uh, Marmaris Marina, heading out onto this peninsula. So we found this little park up uh, in the woods uh, about 15 minutes drive from where we were in Marmaris. The only worry we have is that over the weekend we're not going to get much sun on the solar panels because we are in the trees and although it's sunny here now most of the day it won't be. So we'll carry on looking uh, as we head to the cave but we think we'll probably head back to Marmaris to the car park where we were. But it is a gorgeous spot. It is. So we're just um, stopping for a bit of lunch. We're cooking up the kofte that we bought from the market this morning and um, they look lovely. Normally they would serve them hot but because we bought them cold and the only way to heat them up is slowly in a frying pan. I've, I've cut them in half um, to heat them up and we've got some nice mm. olives that we bought which are delicious they got a hint of lemon mm. so there you go that is lunch they look absolutely delicious yes they do cheers give them a go are they good the meat looks lovely mm. 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 okay lunch time really is a lovely little spot here so we've driven around i don't know whether you can see that's marmara city right on the other side there um and this would be a good spot. There are just too many trees. Being parked up in the woods for a night or two, if there isn't a curfew, is fine. But being locked from Friday to Monday morning in the shade and you're not allowed to go and drive, you're not allowed to go out, um, I think it would be hard to get a bit more sun. And I think probably by Sunday morning we would definitely have run out of electric. So uh, yeah, we'll try and find another alternative. Right, let's see if we can find this cave. I have no idea whether we've got a walk or... <laughs> but we'll find out! Part of the adventure! Exactly! Look at this, so we're going across, we're going to go across to this next sort of island peninsula bit here. This is very pretty. Yeah, this is definitely worth a drive out. A few steep little hairpin bends coming up like this one. Marmaris Yacht Marina. Look at that, that's lovely. A nice little beach area here, people coming out fishing and uh, having little picnics. I got some big boats down here at the uh, marina. I know they're dry docks because by the height of them. Look how high that is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we're going to try and go. Nimara Magarasi. Two kilometres. Danger Forest Road. <laughs> Great. I think you can still drive up here. What do you reckon? We've been on worse. What you call a rock and, and, a, <laughs> and a good passing place. <laughs> well, you get a seriously good view up here. People stopping to take pictures. Look at that view back towards Marmaris. Just 
getting a bit small, love, now. Look at those trees up there. It's very pretty. But now there's a lot of people parked here, which makes me think, let's park here and walk. I think this is, I think this is definitely, let's park behind that white car, maybe. Okay, so we found this park up, and uh, apparently there is a cave, probably about 10, 15 minutes walk. So we've turned off the main path and there's this little walkway with a rope and some stone steps. So I'm pretty sure we're heading in the right direction. It's very path, pretty, isn't it? The path is littered with leaves. It is. Look at this. Wow, this is so cool. I feel like I'm in Hobbitland. It does feel like Hobbitland. Look at that. I can hear voices, not in a crazy way. Just voices <laughs> down there. I mean, there's people in it. Wow, look at this cave here that we've come to. Really lovely, look up to the opening goes all the way up there up the side of the cliff face here you can start to hear the echo as well i love echo <laughs> yeah echo! it's got that damp smell isn't it yeah that cavey damp, damp smell not hot damp yeah it's definitely cool yeah. oh, hello hey ho hey ho and off to work we go there's a real echo we've got the cave echo going on a little bit muddy and a bit slippery so we're just taking our, our time you can hear all the water droplets dropping down and echoing as they as they hit the floor i always find caves a little bit creepy a little bit eerie anyone else feel a bit creepy in caves of course i'm a little bit claustrophobic as well so when you look down into the little dark tunnels it's a little bit like let me know below if you too struggle with claustrophobia. and we've realized all of these trees around us all of them they're bay leaves apart from the odd piney one they're bay you leaves can smell them i know it's like a bay leaf forest amazing there's no way we would have got trudy up this road but there's a four by four coming and uh that's the way to do <laughs> it <laughs> Mama. That was a lovely walk up through the uh, the forest there and uh, to the cave. It wasn't too far. It was about a 15 minute walk. A little bit steep in places, but no problem. Yeah. Um, and so now we have to go and find somewhere to sleep. We're going to try down by the harbour where we drove up um, at the bottom of the hill in case if the signal's good, maybe we'll stay there. If not, then we're going to go back to uh, Marmara City and to the car park that we stayed last night because it was secure it was quiet and the internet was good yeah it was very quiet not ideal um but uh, but perfect not the best scenery <laughs> yeah it slowed us down the curfews are slowing us down a little bit and this season this time of the year most campsites are closed they're yeah. refurbing doing everything up they haven't got much business so there's no point staying open uh, so it's a little bit tricky yeah especially we're trying to find somewhere for the christmas week and then there's a four day lockdown over New Year. Um, so we're going to try and find somewhere to park for that. So uh, that's the challenge for next week. Well, we've come down from the cave and we have found a little spot. Um, we've checked the signal, it works. We're going to be able to self isolate. Uh, 
There's a marina over there. Trudy's there. But that is our view. How beautiful is that? I'm loving this coastal van life tour. It's just glorious. We want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch our video. If you enjoyed our content, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you don't miss an episode. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.